Chapter 8, Implementation. This chapter has six questions in the official exam. Chapter 8 content, Implementation Guide, Purpose and Scope, Cupid Implementation Approach, Design Guide and Implementation Guide Relationships. The first topic is Implementation Guide, Purpose and Scope. COPY 2019 Implementation Guide emphasizes an enterprise-wide view of governance of information and technology. Therefore, the implementation of the governance system should be an integral part of enterprise governance, covering the full end-to-end -end business and IT functional areas of responsibility. One of the common reasons why some governance system implementations fail is that they are not initiated and then managed properly as programs to ensure that benefits are realized. Governance programs need to be sponsored by the executive management, be properly scoped, and define objectives that are attainable or achievable. Implementation approach should always be based on empowering business and IT stakeholders and role players to take ownership of IT-related governance and management decisions and activities by facilitating and enabling change. The implementation program is closed when the process for focusing on IT-related priorities and governance improvement is generating a measurable benefit and the program has become embedded in the ongoing business activity. The second topic is Qubit Implementation Approach. Qubit Implementation Approach has seven phases and three rings. The seven phases are, what are the drivers? Where are we now? Where do we want to be? What needs to be done? How do we get there? Did we get there? And how do we keep the momentum going? The three rings are program management, change management, and continual improvement life cycle. So in the first phase, what are the drivers? We have initiated program as part of a program management. We have established desire to change in change enablement. We have recognized the need to act as part of continual improvement life cycle. In the second phase, where are we now? We have defined problems and opportunities as part of a program management. We have form implementation team as part of change management. We have assess current state as part of continual improvement life cycle. In the third phase, where do we want to be? We have defined roadmap as part of a program management. We have communicate outcome as part of change management. We have defined target state as part of continual improvement life cycle. In the fourth phase, what needs to be done? We have plan a program as part of a program management. We have identify role players as part of change enablement. We have built improvement as part of continual improvement life cycle. In the fifth phase, how do we get there? We have execute a plan as part of program management. We have operate and use as part of change enablement. We have implement improvements as part of continual improvement life cycle. In the sixth phase, did we get there? We have realized benefits as part of a program management. We have embedded new approaches as part of change enablement. We have operate and measure as part of continual improvement life cycle. In the seventh phase, how do we keep the momentum going? We have review effectiveness as part of a program management. We have sustain as part of change enablement. We have monitor and evaluate as part of continual improvement life cycle. The seven phases in details are, phase one, what are the drivers? Phase one of the implementation approach identifies current change drivers, and it creates at executive management levels a desire to change that is then expressed in an outline of a business case. The change driver can be internal or external event, condition or key issue that serves as a stimulus for change. Examples are trends in industry, market or technical, performance shortfalls, 
software implementations, and even the goals of the enterprise can act all as change drivers. Risk associated with the implementation of the program itself is described also in the business case and managed throughout the life cycle. So that preparing, maintaining, and monitoring a business case are fundamental and important disciplines for justifying, supporting, and then ensuring successful outcomes for any initiative, including improvement of the governance system. They ensure a continuous focus on the benefits of the program and their realization. Phase two, where are we now? Phase two aligns information and technology related objectives with enterprise strategies and risk, and prioritizes the most important enterprise goals alignment goals and the processes. So the importance of this phase is to help management to know its current capability and where deficiencies may exist. This can be achieved by process capability assessment of the current status of the selected processes. Phase three, where do we want to be? Phase three sets target for improvement followed by a gap analysis to identify potential solution. Gap analysis between the baseline in the previous phase and the target defined in this phase. Some solutions will be quick wins and others more challenging or long-term tasks. In general, a priority should be given to projects that are easier to achieve and likely to give the greatest benefit. Longer term tasks should be broken down into manageable pieces. Phase four, what needs to be done? Phase four describes how to plan feasible and practical solutions by defining a project supported by justifiable business cases and a change plan for implementation. A well-developed business case can help us to ensure that the project's benefits are identified and continually monitored. Phase five, how do we get there? Phase five provides for implementing the proposed solutions via day-to-day -day practices and establishing measures and monitoring systems to ensure that business alignment is achieved and performance can be measured. Success always requires engagement, awareness and communication, understanding and commitment of top management and ownership by the affected business and IT process owners. Phase six, did we get there? Phase six focuses on sustainable transition of the improved governance and management practices into normal business operations it further focuses on monitoring achievement of the improvement using the performance metrics and expected benefits. Phase seven, how do we keep the momentum going? Phase seven reviews the overall success of the initiative, identifies further governance or management requirements, and reinforces the need for continual improvement. It also prioritizes further opportunities to improve the governance system. The third topic is design guide and implementation guide relationships. There are relationships between the first three phases in the implementation guide and the COVID design guide phases. Phase one in the implementation, what are the drivers? It is related to step one in the design guide, understand the enterprise context and the strategy. Phase two in implementation, where are we now, is related to the last three steps in the design guide, which are determine the initial scope of the governance system, refine the scope of the governance system, conclude the governance system design. Phase three in the implementation guide, where do we want to be? It is related to the last step in the COVID design guide, which is conclude the governance system design.